What's up tricksters, today your favorite trading coach is teaching you how to pick your main agent, which agents are going to help you with faster improvement and I'm showcasing you my ultimate agents tier list that is going to change your way of thinking in Valorant forever. When you're grinding Valorant or any other multiplayer game, you want to reach highest ranks as soon as possible, so you can play with and against better players if your main goal is to improve or become an esports player. If you are playing against gold players for 6 months in a row, your personal improvement as a player is going to be extremely slow, because in these lower ranks your ability to notice your mistakes and fix them is limited. Everyone in lower ranks are making same mistakes, and over time you will consider these mistakes as a normal habit, while in reality they are stopping you from progressing to the next level. If I put an average gold player on an immortal account for 6 months, he is going to improve two times faster than if he was playing in gold for that period of time. In the first few months he is probably going to be obliterated by immortals, but slowly over time his body, mind and mechanical skill will start to adapt and progress. Even if he is not doing any VOD reviews or proper training, just the experience of playing with and against better players will boost his game knowledge and skill. He is going to pick a lot of good habits and tricks that high elo players are using with or against him. And then when he comes back to play in gold elo, he is probably going to take a big amber turd on these players. That is how human brains and adaptation works, we are designed to learn, adapt and overcome all obstacles in front of us, no matter of our personal limitations, because every limit can be broken, and while we are improving our weaknesses, we should be focusing on our strengths. If you're not smart enough, develop your mechanical skill to godlike levels. If your mechanical skills suck, use your brain. If you don't have hands, use your legs to play. Unless you're an absolute plant, a fucking dandelion, there is nothing that is stopping you from your personal improvement except your mentality and work ethics. But if you hire me as your personal coach on my Discord server, where I improve thousands of players in Valorant, your progress is going to be even faster, and you're two steps ahead over everyone else. Now that we've established your goals and way of thinking, Valorant has a very specific problem. Agents are going to impact the speed of your improvement and grind. You want to pick the agents that will put you in enormous amount of different situations from which you can learn, agents that will force you to play both passive and aggressive, agents that will force you to use both your brain and mechanical skill, while in the same time having a lot of room to adapt in different scenarios. You want to abuse everything that is overpowered at that moment of time to reach highest ranks as soon as possible, and then you can start experimenting with different playstyles and adapting to specific meta. Now we have to talk about very important rules in Valorant when it comes to the team compositions and agents. If you are between Iron 1 and Immortal 3, there are some agents that are going to improve you much faster than any other. In this elo you want to master 2 agents to absolutely god tier levels and 1 agent that is your alternative pick. I highly recommend you to pick agents with similar playstyles that belong to the same categories that we will be discussing later in this video. In these ranks you never want to fill any position, it is much better to have a player that is comfortable on his main agent than forcing him to play something that he never played before. And of course on some maps in Valorant having some agents is going to be extremely beneficial for your team, but at the end of the day that completely doesn't matter because ranked gameplay in these lobbies are pure gambling if you are relying on your teammates to carry you. Here you don't trust anyone except yourself. You should control the outcome of your matches, whether it is a win or loss, it doesn't matter. The experience will make you improve. If others are carrying you or you're losing the games because of your teammates, you're never learning anything new about yourself. 
in Valorant Esports and ranks that are above Immortal 3, you will have to be a bit more adaptive. Sometimes you will have to fill specific roles or to play specific agents for the sake of improving your overall chances to win. In those environments, every single agent in Valorant is viable on the same level. There are no tier lists, no bad or good agents. You need to play whatever your team needs from you and of course having larger pool of agents to grind is going to be extremely beneficial. If you are Immortal 3, Radiant or in some esports team, you have to be adaptive. You need to fill the roles and every agent is S tier, depending on team strategy, while team composition matters a lot. Thus, we can call this tier list that I'm going to share with you today the ultimate agents tier list for faster solo queue improvement between Iron 1 and Immortal 3. But before we start, I'd highly recommend you to hit that subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment and turn on your notifications for some epic coaching videos in the future as well. Currently in Valorant, we have 19 different agents that are divided in four categories. Duelist, Initiators, Controllers and Sentinels. And straight from the beginning, this way of looking at the characters is completely wrong. We need to categorize agents by similarity in their gameplay and their play style. For an example, Chamber maybe has the Sentinel's role, but his overall playstyle is much more similar to Jet than let's say for an example Sage. That is why in Valorant we need to divide agents in four completely different categories based on their overall gameplay. At number one spot we have Rico agents whose primary task is to reveal the enemies and gather information for their team. They completely rely on their allies to control outcomes of the rounds and in this category we have Sova and Fate. They share similar playstyles and their main problem is that they heavily rely on how good or bad your teammates are. That is why I definitely recommend you to stay away from maining those two agents until you reach at least immortal skill level as a player and we are going to put both of them in B tier. But on the other hand they are amazing agents in esports and high level competition once once you reach higher immortal ranks. At number 2 spot we have immobile map control agents that are extremely dependent on teammates when it comes to the attacker's side, and their potential completely relies on your mechanical skill as a player. Their outplay potential is limited, and their adaptiveness to different situations is also pure gambling in Valorant ranked solo queue. In this category we have Brimstone, Sage, Viper, Killjoy, Cypher and Astra. Brimstone and Sage are the best from this group, because of their easy to use abilities and how useful they can be in the hands of literally any player, while on the other hand, Viper, Killjoy and Cypher are extremely passive and they are going to build up a lot of bad habits for you. And Astra is simply shit for solo queue grind after the nerfs. The main problem of these agents is lack of adaptiveness, lack of carry potential and they are not going to put you in many different situations from which you can learn. If you main those agents below Diamond, you are going to build up a huge amount of bad passive habits and you are not going to improve your skill sets fast. At number 3 spot we have pop flash agents that are able to clear angles, engage enemies and force gunfights with their flash abilities. These agents are also heavily relying on your mechanical skill as a player and their outplay potential is somewhat limited because you still rely on how good or bad your teammates are in a specific situations and what type of team composition you have. In this category we have Reyna, Yoru, Breach, Ko, Sky and Phoenix. All of them share extremely similar gameplay that is reliant on good positioning, mechanical skill, understanding of space control and unfortunately if you have a mental abomination of a player on the smokers or sentinels position, you are not going to have a lot of fun with them. They are definitely worth maining around platinum or diamond levels, but the problem is lack of adaptiveness and the amount of different scenarios that you can play with them is kinda limited. And at the number 4 spot we have high mobility agents that have extreme outplay and repositioning potential with movement. These agents are able to be passive and aggressive in the same time. They can abuse every single horizontal and vertical off angle on any map in Valorant and be extremely unpredictable. They can abuse every single weapon to the highest possible levels. With those agents you are able to adapt to almost every single situation that you come across and no matter how much your teammates are good or bad, you can always control the outcome of your rounds in some particular way. That is why these agents are the best to grind solo queue ranks from Iron 1 to Radiant and in this category we have Omen, Chamber, Jet, Raze and we have Neon as an outsider. Omen is currently the only S 
plus tier agent in Valorant, because he has everything that you need to improve as a player and to control the outcome of your matches. High mobility with teleport, high outplay potential with ultimate, aggressive and passive playstyle with flash, adaptiveness is unlimited with two powerful smokes to control the map on both attackers and defenders side, no matter of yours or teammates positioning. He is the best Valorant agent for fast improvement as a player. Chamber and Jet have fallen from their thrones a bit because of numerous nerfs that they've received and right now they are the second best agents to main that share similar playstyle to Omen. They have the second life abilities, an extremely deadly kit to carry solo queue matches, but their adaptiveness is a bit lower than Omen's right now. And Raze and Neon are A plus tier. Their utility is extremely deadly, you can clear enormous amount of angles and engage enemies in some unpredictable ways, but overall adaptiveness and control of the rounds is not on the level of other agents from this group. They can become somewhat useless in a specific situations. And I see you writing down in the comments right now. But Charlatan, Dustnert reached Radiant with Cypher and Shotguns only, Ethos and Red got Radiant with Yoru, Emil is Radiant with Brimstone. And I reached Radiant with Sova, but we are the exception and not the rule. On my twitch.tv forward slash charlatan channel, I've done countless of Iron 1 to Radiant roads with different agents and different playstyles. But you cannot use professional and ex-professional FPS players as a rule for your improvement. There is always going to be one in a thousand of players that is going to reach Radiant with Astra and Shorty only, but in this video we are talking about 99% of Valorant's community. Regular players, without any competitive background, striving to become Radiant machines and esports players. I've got into Radiant in less than 3 weeks after this game was released, and you are struggling to get out of Platinum for the past 3 months. I'm here to share with you the real knowledge. I improved almost 2000 players in the past 2 Two years of Valorant and trust me I know what I'm speaking about. If you want to play Cypher with shotguns only to Radiant for the next two years, be my guest. But if you want to see Radiant in the next one or two acts, join me on this ride to your true fast improvement. So these are the key notes to remember if you truly want to improve in Valorant and reach your goals as fast as possible. In ranks above Immortal 3 and in esports, every single agent is viable. Team compositions matter a lot, you need to be more flexible and experimenting with different playstyles that will ensure you the victory. In ranks between Iron 1 and Immortal 3, movement based agents with a lot of map control and self sufficient utility are going to improve you as a player much faster than any other character, and you will reach higher ranks easier. And then you can play Astra with a shorty only. Until Immortal 3, main two agents and have one alternative pick from the same category that I've already explained. You don't need to play Omen to reach Radiant, you can play Sky, Breach, whatever you want, but changing between different agents that don't share similar playstyle is going to hurt a lot your consistency. For me, my main three agents will always be Omen, Jet and Chamber. Find which playstyle suits you the best and keep grinding my solo queue gorillas. And that's it for today's coaching session with Charlatano Papito. If you enjoyed in this video and want to see more of them in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on, leave a like and comment. Follow me on twitch.tv forward slash charlatan for some epic Valorant live streams. Check out my other social media down in the description below and join my official Discord server if you want to hire me as your personal Radiant coach. I'm yours, one and only, Warden of the Tricksters community. Thank you for watching and cut, baby!